Grrr, you don't have to be a pirate now to run a tower and docks, do you? In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can create your own headless Raspberry Pi torrent box. Now this includes everything, including setting up a VPN, setting up network shares, and also setting up a USB hard drive. What more could you want? Stick around, because it's TechWiz time. Hey guys, Jonathan here with TechWiz time, where I teach you technology through tutorials. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to set up your own Raspberry Pi torrent box. Now, there are plenty of tutorials out there on YouTube on setting up a torrent box using Raspberry Pi. However, they don't go into the detail that this video is going into. So one of the key differences with this tutorial is that I'll be setting up a hard drive. So a USB hard drive connected straight to the Raspberry Pi. I'll also be showing you how to set up OpenVPN so you can set up your own VPN directly on the Raspberry Pi so you don't need to actually set it up network wide and also setting up Samba shares so that way you can share the contents of the torrents that you've downloaded from that hard drive to the rest of your network. And one of the beauties of this is that it runs headless so you don't actually need to hook this up to a monitor. Everything can be controlled after the initial setup from any computer in your home on the same network. Now, before we go any further, I just wanna ask you a favor, and that's to share this video wherever you can across the internet. I'm talking Facebook groups, Reddit, etc. I really wanna get this video out to as many people as possible because it is what I believe to be the best way to set up a torrent box. Sharing this video really does help out the channel, and in advance, I just wanna say thank you. So a couple of things that you will need before we actually start this tutorial, you'll need a Raspberry Pi, in my case, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 1 because I've just had it lying around and it doesn't need a lot of power. So I've stuck with the Raspberry Pi 1. The other thing that you will need is a USB hard drive. Now I'm using a two terabyte Western digital hard drive and that's doing the job for me. Next, you will need to hook it up with a USB keyboard and also to a wired ethernet point. And lastly, something that I completely forgot, you will need a micro SD card with the latest version of Raspbian Lite written to it. So make sure you've got that all written to the micro SD card before we start this tutorial. So without further ado, if you've got all those things, let's jump over to the Raspberry Pi and we'll look into setting this up right now. So before we even start this tutorial, one of the things that you'll want to have done is to install Raspbian Lite onto a micro SD card. Now, the reason why we're gone with Raspbian Lite here is because it's a lightweight operating system. So it doesn't have a lot of overheads. So to log into your Raspbian Lite installation, you just need to use the username Pi and the password Raspberry. So once you've logged in, the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is do a quick update. So to do that, we type in sudo apt update. This may take a little while, so please be patient. But once it's done, the next thing that we'll wanna do is type in sudo apt upgrade. This will definitely take a lot longer than the update process. So bear with it and eventually it will finish. So now that we've finished upgrading our Raspbian installation, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is to change our password. And to do this, we just type in sudo and then P-A-S-S-W-D. We need to type in our new password and then we need to re-enter that new password again and then it will be changed. So make sure you keep record of this password that you've just changed it to. Now the next step is we're gonna install OpenVPN. So to do that, we type in sudo apt install openvpn y. Now the reason why we put a dash Y after it is so it automatically says yes to continue. So after a little bit that will come back and it will finish installing OpenVPN. So the next step is we're going to change our directory to the OpenVPN directory and to do that we type in cd forward slash etc forward slash OpenVPN. Okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to download the OpenVPN configuration files directly from private internet access. Now that's my VPN of choice, I've actually used them for five years purely because their service is excellent and their VPNs are not logged. So if you'd like to check them out, I've left a link down in the description below. So to download the OpenVPN profiles, all we need to do is type in sudo wget and the URL on screen now. And once that's done, we'll unzip that file. So to do that, we type in sudo unzip openvpn.zip. This will extract all the profiles to the OpenVPN directory. So take note of all these names here, depending on what VPN you wanna to connect to, will depend on the name that you'll need to choose here. So to test if this is gonna work or not, I'm gonna try it with the Netherlands VPN. So I'll type in sudo openvpn dash dash config dot forward slash Netherlands dot ovpn. Now Netherlands needs to have a capital N, so make sure you do that. And what should pop up is a request for your username and password. So type those in here and it should go to initialization sequence completed. This means that there wasn't any problems, so to terminate this, we'll just press Control C on the keyboard. 
So now that we've found that it's working correctly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a configuration file so you don't have to type in your username and password all the time. So to do that, we just type in sudo nano login.conf. Now this will create a new document. So what we'll do is we'll type in our username on the first line and our password on the second line. And then to save this document, we just press Control X, Y and enter. And just as an extra safety precaution, what we'll do is we'll change the modification rights for this file. And to do that, we type in sudo chmod 400 login.conf. Now the particular VPN that I'm gonna connect to in this tutorial is going to be Singapore now. So what we'll do is we'll copy the OVPN file and create it as a CONF file where we can change a few of the settings. So to do that, we just type in sudo cp, remember your cases here, so singapore.ovpn and then singapore.conf. And the next step is to edit that CONF file. So we'll type in sudo nano singapore.conf. In this text file, what we'll need to do is we'll need to go down to auth-user-pass section. And after that, we'll type in forward slash, etc forward slash openvpn forward slash login.conf. So this is redirecting the username and password to grab it from this file. And just to be safe, what we'll do is we'll go down to the CRL and the CA section down the bottom and we'll specify the forward slash, etc forward slash openvpn directory structure. Now that we've done all that, we'll press control X, Y and enter to save that file. And the next step is, is we will test it to make sure that OpenVPN works with that configuration file. So to do that, we type in sudo openvpn singapore.conf. And if everything went okay, then it should say initialization sequence completed. So if you get to that, all you need to do is press control C on the keyboard to interrupt that. And we'll be back at the prompt. So the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to want to make OpenVPN start every time the Raspberry Pi boots up. So to do that, we'll type in sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash default forward slash openvpn and what we need to do in this file is we need to go down to just after the last auto start create a new line there and we'll type in in capitals auto start equals quotation marks singapore without the extension and then close quotation marks now if you're in the us and you press the quotation marks and it comes up with an at symbol. What you can use for now until we go and change it is the at symbol up on number two. So shift two should give you the quotation marks. So once you're done with that, you need to press control X, Y and enter to save that file. So now that we've done that, what we'll do is we'll give the Raspberry Pi a quick reboot. In my case here, I'm using sudo shutdown dash R zero. And once it comes back, log in with your Raspberry Pi username and password, the one that we set before the username is still Pi. And what we'll do is we'll quickly just check and see whether or not we're using OpenVPN right now. And to do that, if you already know what your IP address is, you can compare it to this one here. So we'll type in curl http colon forward slash forward slash ipinfo.io forward slash IP. Now I know that particular IP address is definitely not mine, so it is connected via OpenVPN to the Singapore VPN using PIA. Awesome. Okay, so now we've got OpenVPN set up using PIA, which is called Private Internet Access. PIA is actually one of the VPN providers that I've been with for about five years now, and I highly recommend it. So if you do wanna check them out, you can check out the link in the description below. But now that we've set up OpenVPN, the next step will be to set up the USB hard drive. So let's pop back over to the Pi and we'll go from there. So obviously make sure that your USB hard drive is attached and also make sure you've got your USB keyboard still attached as well. But don't attach any USB sticks or anything like that because it'll just confuse things. So what you'll need to do once you've plugged that in and it's all up and running is type in sudo parted forward slash dev forward slash SDA. And we can quickly just check on the petitions here by pressing P on the keyboard. I've previously wiped mine so it's ready to go. So all I need to do now is type in MK table MS-DOS. Make sure you've got nothing on here that can be lost. Make sure it's a fresh one ready to go. And then just say yes to continue. The next thing we're gonna do is set up the petition. So we put in MK part primary ext4. Now this will be a Linux petition and we're gonna make the whole thing Linux based. So we'll do 0% and then 100%. So it will make the whole hard drive Linux compatible. Once you've done that, you can put in P again to see if that's done it correctly or type the whole thing, which is print. 
I can see the petition is in there correctly. So now I can just put in quit and it's exiting the parted program. So the next thing we'll type in is sudo mkfs.ext4 forward slash dev forward slash sda1. If it does ask you just press y to continue and if everything went correctly then it should come back saying done. Okay so we've prepared the hard drive now what we're going to do is we're going to create a mount point for the hard drive inside the Raspberry Pi. So to do that we type in sudo mkdir forward slash mnt forward slash torrents and we're going to quickly mount it to check that it works so we'll type in sudo mount forward slash dev forward slash sda1 then forward slash mnt forward slash torrents. Now to check if that's worked correctly, what we'll do is we'll type in df dash h. And if I have a look down the bottom there, I can see that dev sda1 is correctly mounted to that torrents folder. Awesome, but not so quickly. What we wanna do is we wanna set it up so that way every time it reboots, it automatically mounts the dev sda1 petition to that torrents folder. So to do that, we type in sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash fs tab. So in this text file down the bottom after the last slash dev entry, we'll create a new line in there and we'll type out what's on the screen now. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to make sure that you use tab and spaces as well and try and line it up just so it's nice and neat and you'll know next time what the settings were. So this is just basically to tell the Raspberry Pi Linux based operating system, every time you boot up, you also want to mount the external hard drive to that torrents folder. Once you're done, all you need to do is press Control X, Y and enter and the FS tab file will be saved. So now what we'll do is we'll do a quick reboot and to do that, we'll type in sudo reboot. Again, this is just another way of rebooting the Raspberry Pi. And once we're back up and running, what we'll do is we'll log in again and we'll quickly check and see whether that has mounted automatically. And to do that, we'll type in df, then dash h. And down the bottom there, I can see the dev sda1 petition has been mounted correctly. Awesome. Okay, so now we've got the Raspberry Pi set up with the USB hard drive and it's all ready to go. It's automatically gonna start up every time we reboot the Pi. So there's nothing more we can do with the USB hard drive. So the next step is to set up the torrent program or the torrent client. And in this case, I've chosen to go with Deluge. Now the reason I've chosen Deluge is because of its compatibility with a lot of torrent places out there, as well as the ability to use add-ons. So we're not going to explore that in this tutorial. However, it is something that you can look into for yourself after you finish setting it up. So let's jump back over to the Raspberry Pi and we will set up Deluge. So now we're going to install Deluge on the Raspberry Pi. And to do that, what we'll do is we'll type in sudo apt install deluged with a D on the end, then dash Y to auto continue. This will take a little bit as it's got to download a few files to set this all up. But once it is done, the next step is to set up the web client. And to do that, we type in sudo apt install deluge without the D dash web dash Y. Okay, so now we've got the two programs installed. The next step is we're going to be setting up some folders on our USB hard drives. So to do that, we'll type in cd forward slash mnt forward slash torrents. Once we're inside that directory, what we'll do is we'll start creating some directories. So we'll type in sudo mkdir downloading. This will be where we keep files that are currently downloading. Next, we'll do sudo mkdir completed. This is where the completed files go. Then we'll type in sudo mkdir watch. Now this will be important at the very end if you stick with it, where you can drag and drop files through Samba so it automatically starts in Deluge. And lastly, sudo mkdir backups. Now this will be where any of the torrents you download are backed up to, just in case you need to go back there and re-download it. And we can check that those are all correct in there. So we'll type in ls-la and this will give us a list and we can see all of our folders are there, ready to go. So the next important thing is to get the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And to do that, we'll just type in ifconfig. And I can see up there in ETH0, my IP address. So that's the one that I'll use and it should be in the same or similar place for yours. But before we can go over to the computer, we'll have to start deluged itself. So to do that, we type in sudo service deluged with a D and start. Now that's the base program, but we'll also need to start the web client. So to do that, we just type in deluge-web without the D. Now this will just sit there, it won't come back to a prompt. So what we'll do is we'll pop over to the computer now and we'll see how this actually logs in and what we'll need on that side. 
So to log into the Deluge web client, what we need to do is we need to type in the IP address from before with colon 8112. Now it should prompt you for a password and the password is deluged without the D. So it should come up to the connection manager here and what we need to do is we need to click on the IP address that we see there. And if the daemon isn't started yet, we need to click on start daemon and then hit connect. Now I've gone into the preferences section here and under interface, I'm going to change the password from default, which was deluge and then type in a new password. Then all I need to do is hit change. Now I'll go to the download section on the left hand side inside preferences still. And here we'll type in the folders that we've created. So the first one is forward slash MNT, forward slash torrents, forward slash downloading forward slash. Next we'll put a tick in beside move completed to and we'll type in this folder as forward slash mount forward slash torrents forward slash completed forward slash. Beside auto add torrent files we will put a tick in there and we'll put the directory in as forward slash mnt forward slash torrents forward slash watch forward slash. And lastly where it's copy to torrents we'll put a tick in there and we'll put the directory in as forward slash mount or forward slash mnt I should say forward slash torrents forward slash backups forward slash and then we'll just click on apply. You can go through the other preferences here and change them as you need to but this is basically what you'll need to get started. So the next step is we're going to add a torrent. So to do that up the top we click on the add button and we'll also click on the URL because we're going to paste the URL in here. And in this case I'm going to go over to the Raspberry Pi website and I'm going to download the latest Raspbian. So I'll copy the torrent link there and I'll go back to Deluge and I'll paste it in the URL section. So we'll just wait for a moment and that should come up with the Raspbian zip file and then what we can do is we can just click on the add button. Now you'll notice things here are changing, it's starting to download but then all of a sudden error. Now hopefully you haven't bailed on this video yet because this is something important that we'll need to change on the Raspberry Pi to get it to work. At the moment the permissions are a problem so let's jump back over to the Raspberry Pi and we'll fix that now. So back on the Raspberry Pi now what we'll need to do is we'll need to press Control c to interrupt this program and what we'll do now is we'll type in sudo chown dash capital R pi colon pi then forward slash mnt forward slash torrents forward slash. This will change the ownership recursively for that torrents folder so that way the user pi owns those folders. Now to check that this worked correctly what we'll do is we'll type in ls dash la forward slash mnt forward slash torrents. And here you can see that the username and the user group are both pi running down there. So let's start up deluge-web again and we'll jump back to the computer and we'll see if this works. So connect in through the web client again and this time what we'll do is we'll add that Raspbian URL again through the add button up the top. And you will see now that it actually starts up and I'm going to fast forward it here but you can see that the whole thing downloads without a problem now that we've set up those permissions. Now in the last step of this tutorial, which is the Samba shares, it does get a little bit tricky if you're using a UK based keyboard layout with a US computer. So what we're going to do here quickly is we're going to change a few things so that way your keyboard will work if you're based in the US. So we'll type in sudo raspi-config and this will start up the Raspberry Pi configuration tool. One of the things that I'm going to do with this particular setup is I'm going to change the host name to something other than Raspberry Pi. So in this case I'll go into hostname and I'll change that to Deluge. This will allow me to log in via a web browser to deluge.local colon 8112 instead of the IP address. You don't have to do this but if you do like it to be a little bit more clean then this is how you would do that. So the next step we'll go down to localization and then we'll go to keyboard layout. We'll keep it on the standard English 105 key keyboard but we'll go into that and we'll go down the bottom and choose other instead of English UK. We'll go down and choose English US or whichever the other language you want to choose. And then we'll go up the top and choose English US. We can click OK through the other settings here. But once you go back you can go back into localization and go into change time zone. And here I'm in Australia Sydney so I'll just change that to Australia and Sydney. And one other thing you could do is you could remove the overscan. I'm just doing that here because every now and then I will log into the Raspberry Pi instead of SSHing into it. And because I'm going to be running this headless, it doesn't need a lot of GPU memory, so I will change that from 64 down to 16. This just gives me a little bit more memory to play with, especially considering I'm only using a Raspberry Pi 1 here. Once you're done, you can arrow across to finish, 
and this will let you know that you need to reboot. So do that now. To start Deluge automatically every time the Raspberry Pi reboots, we need to change something in the rc.local file. So to do that, we'll type in sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash rc.local. Go down to the bottom of the file here, create a few extra lines, and we're going to create two things here. This is a little script that will actually tell you what your IP address is at the command prompt whenever you reboot. So follow this code on the screen now. Again, you can skip this if you like. But the second thing that we need to do is we need to start up both Deluged and the Deluge web client every time it reboots. So to do that, we type in the line sudo dash u pi forward slash usr forward slash bin forward slash python then forward slash usr forward slash bin forward slash deluge dash web without the D. And then we'll also include the and or ampersand symbol. Now the reason for the and and ampersand or ampersand symbol I should say is because when you're booting, if you don't include the and, it won't actually proceed to the login screen. It will just stay there in a loop. So by putting the ampersand symbol there, it will run that line of code as a separate process. So finally, after you're done there, you need to type in as a new line, exit, zero. You need to save that by pressing Control X, Y and enter. And then we'll do a quick reboot with sudo reboot. And if you did type in the little script there to show your IP address, you will see on the screen there, connect to Deluge using and your IP address. So this is just handy for anyone that wants to keep track of how to log in, just in case they forget. Awesome. All right, so now that we've got Deluge set up, it's all up and running. There were a couple little hitches there, but I showed you how to overcome them. And now the last thing that we want to do is we'll want to set it up so that way we can access the Raspberry Pi via the network. So one more time, let's jump back over the Raspberry Pi and we'll set up Samba shares so we can access any of the torrents or even drag and drop torrents into the watch folder. So the last thing that we want to do here in this tutorial is we want to set up Samba shares or network shares for Windows and other operating systems. So to do that, we need to type in sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash samba forward slash smb.conf. Inside this file, we need to go down to win support and take out the hash and then change that from no to yes. Then we need to go right down to the very bottom of the file and create a new line there and we're going to set up the Samba share information here. So I won't read this all out, but what I will do is I'll explain what each line is doing. So the first line there with the hard brackets is just giving this share a name and that's Torrance all in capital letters. The second part, the comment is giving it an actual name itself. So that's Torrance here. The path is the share that we're going to enable. And in this case, it's forward slash MNT forward slash Torrance. Create mask and directory mask is set at 0755, so that way we have read and write access to it. Read only is set to no, so we can write to it, and browsable is set to yes. Public is yes, and force user is pi, as that's the Raspberry Pi username that we'll be logging into the Samba share with. And lastly, only guest equals no. So once you've done with this, press Control X, Y, and enter. And now we'll just give it a quick reboot with sudo reboot. Now just quickly, if it doesn't work on the computer, Come back to this section here because what you can type in is sudo apt install samba samba-common-bin-y. This is just in case it's missing anything that it requires. And of course, after this, you do a quick sudo reboot. So let's jump over to the computer now and we'll just check how you can log in to your network share. So over on the computer now, what you do is you type into the address bar if you're on a Windows computer, backslash, backslash, your host name or IP address here. And it should come up asking you for your username and password. And this is your Pi username as well as your Pi password that you might have changed it to. If you've left it as default, this should just be Raspberry Pi as the password. Now it should load up to the torrents folder. So if you double click into there, you'll see all the folders that we created before. And because I've downloaded Raspbian through the Deluge client before, I can go into the completed folder and see that file already there. So now I can copy this to my computer from the Raspberry Pi itself. And lastly, you can see down the bottom there, the watch folder, which if I was to go into that and drag a torrent file into there, it would automatically start up in the Deluge web client. How awesome is that? Whew. Okay, I know it was a long tutorial, but we got there in the end. And now you've got a Raspberry Pi torrent box that is set up with a VPN. It's also set up with a USB hard drive. It's also set up with the Deluge torrent client. 
and Samba network shares, as well as a watch folder that whenever you drop a torrent file in there, it will automatically start downloading it. How awesome is that? Okay, so in general, if you did enjoy this video and you're not a subscriber already, then make sure you do. There's a little red button down there, you need to click on that. And if you are already a subscriber, then make sure you've hit that bell icon down there so you get notified whenever I release new videos. Don't forget to like this video and also leave me a comment down below if you think there's something that I could have done differently. And as always, imagine, learn, create. Arr, you don't have to be a pirate to be a pirate. Arr, you don't have to be a pirate to run a tarred. I...